Hello, my name is Stella, and I'm here today to talk about better web development with Elm. Uh, so a brief outline of my talk, I'll discuss what Elm is, why bother using it, and then dive into a code example. So Elm began with this very ambitious goal of rethinking how we approach web development. It was initially designed by Evan Schlepicki in 2012, who continues to work on it today. Elm is a functional programming language that compiles to JavaScript. It is not another framework or library like React, nor is it a, types, nor is it a superset like TypeScript. But why not? Why go to the trouble of creating a whole new language for web development when we already have JavaScript? Well, by nature, JavaScript can be hard to maintain. We've all had the experience of writing a JavaScript program that works, only then to refactor it, add a new feature, have the thing break, and spend a lot of time figuring out why. Uh, this maintainability issue is a reason why we have so many different frameworks and flavors of JavaScript out there. Elm seeks to solve these issues by being very easy to maintain, very reliable, meaning that there are fewer bugs in production when you code in Elm, and fast. So here we have a graph comparing the speed of a few different JavaScript frameworks. It actually shows Elm beating React, Ember, and Angular. But how does Elm do all these things? The simple answer is by being a functional programming language. And to really understand why we should bother using Elm and the benefits of using it, I'm going to dive into a few functional programming concepts. So nearly all functions in Elm are pure functions. On the left, we have an example of a pure function in JavaScript, and on the right, an example of a pure function in Elm, which, as you can see, is pretty similar. Um, we have the function name add, the parameters x and y, and on the right side of the equal sign, we have the return value x plus y. Pure functions always produce the same output given the same input, meaning that as long as x and y remain the same, um, the function will always return the same value, no matter what else is going on in other parts of our program. Pure functions also don't cause any side effects, leading us to our next core feature of functional programming, immutability. So here is an example of some JavaScript code. You have a object or an object character and a function mutate, which will reassign the property name to a new value. And this is a perfectly valid operation in JavaScript, um, even though character isn't a const. However, if we try to do something similar in Elm, we get an error. The Elm compiler has no clue what we're trying to do at all. The language simply doesn't allow mutation like this. Uh, there are only constants in Elm. So just by knowing these two things, we can understand why Elm is able to render HTML so quickly, like we saw in that previous bar graph. So like React, Elm uses a virtual DOM, which is an abstract version of the DOM, and diffing, which just means looking for the differences between the current virtual DOM and the new virtual DOM. Virtual DOMs are fast, since when one ele element in the DOM should be changed, they only update that element, rather than force the re-render of the entire page. And the structure of Elm makes it really easy to, de to determine what these changes are. For example, this function to-do list takes in the record tasks. Um, since this is a pure function, we know that if tasks doesn't change, there's no need to re-render to-do list, um, since the output will remain the same. And it is very easy to tell whether or not tasks has changed, since values can't be mutated in Elm. We can simply compare values by reference, which is a very cheap operation, which leads to the great benchmarks we've seen in the previous graph. Elm is also very reliable, meaning that, that unlike in handwritten JavaScript, Elm code does not produce runtime exceptions in practice. Runtime exceptions are errors that occur after compilation during code execution. So in this example, we have the Elm record character, and we're defining a function that we hope will return the number of patties that SpongeBob makes in a week. But when we attempt to compile it, we get this error. Elm, the Elm compiler doesn't even let us run this code because right away it sees that we're trying to perform a mathematical operation with a string. This is all possible because the Elm compiler uses type inference, making it hard for these sorts of bugs to ever make it to our production code. And though Elm's compiler can figure out types for us, the language supports static typing, meaning that above each function, uh, we can define the data types that we're expecting. So for this function, print num, we're expecting to uh, receive an integer as a parameter and to return a string value. This might seem like a pain to define above every function, 
but it can actually help us catch bugs early on and avoid the issues of dealing with unexpected values, um, which can happen pretty often with JavaScript functions. With this static typing system, Elm doesn't even need to have values like undefined and null. They just don't exist in Elm, which can really simplify things. Maintainability. So in Elm and functional programming in general, uh, functions are like building blocks. We want to write them so they do small, specific tasks. So we have nice modular code that is readable and reusable. Um, th so this is how Elm uh, tackles the, the difficulties um, when you're writing uh, more complex, larger code and keeping it very maintainable. Um, L in Elm, it's very easy to use fun functions like building blocks. Um, for a number of reasons, one of which we'll dive into, which is currying. So here we have a basic function adder, which takes in x and y and returns the x plus y. Um, and we'll call this our template function. We can actually pass in 5 for the value of x to adder, and this results in the creation of a new function. So we can pass uh, parameters in one at a time. Um, this is a valid operation, and it just results in the creation of a function that can then take in the next parameter, y, um, and return new values that way. So as you can see, in Elm, it's very easy to create these custom functions from these broader template functions. Um, this is, of course, always also achievable in JavaScript using methods like bind, but in Elm, it's super easy, and every single function can be curried. So now I hope you have a under, better understanding of some of the benefits of Elm. Uh, next, I would like to dive briefly into some code. So I built a really simple uh, timer app in Elm. So you can see it's just a really simple productivity timer. You can have a little countdown. And when it's complete, you see you get a uh, you get the counter for Pomodoro cycles completed, as well as an owl picture, and also there are bun a bunch of other like nice features, typical of these timers. Um, but I really want to draw your attention to uh, this debugger panel. So Elm, the most recent version of Elm comes with this built-in debugger, um, which allows us to actually toggle through states of our application, and we can see what our program looks like at different states. Um, so you can pretty much essentially rewind through application, which, is, which can be really nice. And this is all possible thanks to the Elm architecture. So the Elm architecture simply describes the format of every program we'll write in Elm. The model describes the state of our application, update a way to update our state, and view a way to view our state as HTML. I hope this all sounds familiar because it actually inspired the creators of Redux. So going through the code for this timer, we can see the model, which looks very much like a Redux store. We have the duration, um, which is a number of se seconds on the timer, whether or not it's running, how many cycles have been completed. We have messages, which are like Redux actions. And we have update, which is very much like the Redux reducer, um, also follows a very similar switch statement format. Um, depending on the type of message and the message payload, it will update our state. And we have view, which is really similar, actually, to the render method in React components. Um, notice that these are all Elm functions, not little HTML, um, but it allows us to have this very functional approach towards rendering uh, and defining HTML elements. So just to start wrapping things up, um, a lot of features of popular JavaScript libraries and tools we use, like React, Redux, Ramda.js, which is to apply functional programming concepts to JavaScript, are all actually just built into the language and architecture of Elm. And as a functional programming language, Elm can help us write code that is very modular, maintainable, less error prone, and results in a fast web experience for our users. Here are some additional resources. I really encourage you guys to take a look. I really had a good time uh, learning Elm, especially uh, from our experiences working in React Redux. And yeah, thank you. <laughs>